Good afternoon and welcome to the USDA Office of Community Food Systems webinar series, Feeding Success, Cultivating a Rooted Grant Project. This webinar series is designed for current farm to school grantees across the country. The content and resources provided will support you and your team in continuing to achieve project goals and objectives while digging in deeper to various farm to school topic areas. Today's webinar, the fifth in our series, will focus on school gardens and farms. My name is Stephanie Roberts, and I'm a program analyst with the USDA here at our national office. Today, I'm joined by Juliana Arnett, the Farm to School Regional Lead for the Western Region, based in San Francisco, California. So each webinar in this series is relevant to all active, training, planning, and implementation grantees. Please be sure to refer to the email you received with all of the upcoming webinar information. The next and final webinar of this series, Telling Your Story, will be held on May 7th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Now I'd like to turn it over to Juliana. Take it away. Thanks, Stephanie. Hello, I'm here to talk to you about opportunities to leverage school gardens and farms to support your farm to school program and increase student food service and community buy-in. School gardens and farms are an important element of farm to school that can literally make your program come alive. In this program, I've loosely based the presentation on sections of our school gardens, using gardens to grow healthy habits in cafeterias, classrooms, and communities fact sheet. The sections in our agenda align with those covered in our fact sheet. There are some slight variations, like the inclusion of school farms to today's discussion. We'll talk about school garden and school farm options, food safety, using products from school gardens and farms in the cafeteria, staffing and resources for your programs. We'll also touch on school gardens and farms as classrooms, but only lightly since curricula integration was the focus of our last webinar. Since we likely have a number of educators on today's call, let's start with a pop quiz. In 2015, the USDA Farm to School Census reported a total of 7,100 school gardens across the nation. How many school gardens do you think were on record in 1906? Right. In 1906, there were 75,000 school gardens. Since school gardens predate the USDA National School Lunch Program, some say they were the first meal program. In fact, during World War I, the Federal Bureau of Education formally launched the U.S. School Garden Army with the tagline, a garden for every child, a child in every garden. The program was developed to engage students and families in school and home-based gardening. To aid the program, the Department of Agriculture, like County Agricultural Extension Agents and Agricultural Bulletins to train and support designated garden teachers at schools across the nation. The program engaged 50,000 teachers, 1.5 million students, and hundreds of thousands of parents who put more than 20,000 acres into production. The point is, the federal government recognized the ability of school gardens and farms to enrich education and build healthy habits in communities then, and it still does today. It's why we'll spend this half hour talking about the role of school gardens and farms in farm to school, and especially how to connect them with the meal program. Farm to school is generally understood to include a combination of efforts that connect children with the source of their food through hands-on food education and serving local food in school cafeterias. We most often think of commercial farms when sourcing local. Connecting farms with the meal program is a critical element of farm to school, but school gardens and farms can also provide local supply and give students a special appreciation for the trade. That's why we are such big fans of school gardens and farms. They have the power to teach students about where their food comes from and supply local food to the cafeteria. The best thing is school gardens and farms can come in any shape or size and thrive in all seasons and climates. Gardens or raised beds usually come to mind when people think of these educational spaces and schools. 
For example, in Eureka, California, they needed something low maintenance and accessible to launch their gardening program. The use of five troughs as garden beds proved the perfect choice. Gardens can be as small and as simple as you want or as complex as you want. Hoop houses, hydroponic systems, tower gardens, and other unique gardening mechanisms are popping up around the country. In Reno, Nevada, where the winter snow can put an end to the growing season, small hoop houses were the desired gardening method. For Mr. Urbano's eighth grade science class in PT Guam, the engineering calculations and monitoring required by a hydroponic system made the most sense. School gardens and farms can also produce more than fruits and vegetables. Sweetwater High School District's Nutrition Services Department teamed up with the high school engineering program to create a school food system. The career and technical education students built a chicken coop, raised beds and a shed, and hatched 400 chickens, which students tend to as part of their class. Nutrition Services buys the 10 to 12 dozen eggs the chickens produce each day and offers them as protein boxes, similar to those seen at coffee shops as part of their reimbursable meal. In Livingston, Montana, high school science students built an aquaponics system that produces greens, tomatoes, and more. Students sell the trout to local restaurants and hopefully the cafeteria next year. So eggs, fish, beef production, school gardens and farms can be as diverse as you want and as large as you like. This six acre school farm in Eugene, Oregon is a central component to Bethel School District's farm to school program. It regularly supplies their meal program and is even home to bees. But we'll talk more about this program later. At the USDA, we recognize the important role school gardens and farms of all shapes and sizes, one container to acres of land, have in engaging students of all ages in hands-on agriculture education throughout the season. You should see another quiz question. Uh, this question may seem simple, and we hope it is. But we have noticed sometimes school gardens and farms are disconnected from a district or school's farm-to-school program. Future Farmers of America programs or after-school garden clubs may not be aware that their activities align with farm to school. So here is our question. If your school manages or hosts a school garden or farm, is it engaged in farm to school? Yes, we hope that you all answered yes. School gardens and farms are a major component of farm to school and can provide local products to the cafeteria and food education. If you haven't already linked with existing school garden and farm programs at your local district, we encourage you to connect. They can offer program knowledge, resources, and skills, and are a surefire way to get kids excited about food. In the last webinar, you learned how to integrate farm to school into curricula. So I'll be brief. School gardens and farms are living laboratories that create teaching opportunities ripe for nutrition and agricultural education, taste tests, new food exposure, understanding the farm to fork process. They're all excellent resources for teaching math, literature, business, or any discipline. The possibilities are endless. Here, Los Molinas Unified School District offers students job training and professional experience through the Career Technical and Education Program as they grow product for the cafeteria. Partnering with multiple disciplines makes education interactive and engaging. Many hands also make light work. It can foster more commitment to school garden farm projects and increase the likelihood that programs will be sustained. So, as you're thinking about your projects, who in your school district might be interested in working or partnering with the garden? One entity might be food services. So let's address an important subject likely on everyone's mind, food safety. Food safety is a priority for all food served in child nutrition programs. Products from school gardens and farms are no exception. It's important to clear up that there is nothing inherently more dangerous about serving food from a garden or school farm than your distributor or other sources. These foods have the shortest pathway from the field to the fork and likely touch fewer hands 
In fact, because of the transparency of the short supply chain, this produce has the potential to be very safe. We want to clarify, there are no federal regulations, neither procurement nor food safety, that prohibit schools from using garden produce in the school meal programs. Schools may choose their own food safety protocols and rules and establish their own vendor requirements in accordance with state and local regu regulations. We do encourage districts to connect with their local health departments to ensure school garden and farm to cafe programs follow any local food safety regulations. From coast to coast, school districts around the country have worked with public health professionals to develop food safety measures to confidently and safely use school garden products in the cafeteria. With so many good examples, there's no reason to start from scratch. We've pictured food safety protocols from three of our grantees above. These procedures cover safety matters in school gardens and farms related to garden location, water, pests, sanitation, soil, compost, and harvesting. Some even include food safety practices related to eggs. We often receive questions about school gardens and farms and good agriculture practices. Um, for GAPs are just voluntary audits that a farm can request to verify that their fruits and vegetables are packed, handled, and stored as safely as possible to minimize the risk of microbial food safety hazards. GAPs are recommended, but they're not required for school gardens and farms. There's also no federal requirement for schools to purchase, purchase food from farms that have passed a GAP audit. It's really important to note that gardens and farms can implement the same practices without having formal GAP certification. As in the examples just highlighted, many school districts apply these principles to their programs without requiring actual certification. If you're not sure if your school garden or farm is following food safety best practices, we encourage you to review examples of how other schools are implementing these measures and consult with food safety experts like your local health department, cooperative extensions, and nonprofits. You can also check out our food safety fact sheet. All right, time for another pop quiz. Does the USDA have any rules prohibiting school garden or school farm produce from being served in the cafeteria? I'll give you just a second to think about that. Got some good listeners on this webinar. All right. Now, schools may choose their own food safety protocols and rules and establish their own vendor requirements in accordance with state and local regulations. We're not done yet. Another pop quiz. True or false? USDA requires schools participating in the National School Lunch Program to use produce from GAP certified farms. Give you another couple seconds to think about this. All right. The answer is true. School food authorities may use nonprofit food service account dollars to fund school garden and farm programs or purchase product from these programs. The only caveat is that SFAs cannot double dip with funds, such as buy plants and seed starts for a program and then later purchase the product once it's harvested. So we'll wrap up with a few tips on staffing and funding. For staffing, we really wanna encourage you to take a team approach. Garden sustainability has always been tricky. A thriving, comprehensive garden program needs more than one person. To develop the type of program you'd like to see, think about who in your school and community could offer support. Develop a vision and a plan, ideally with district leadership. It's easier to get people on board when there is a vibrant vision and clear goals. Participation and the creation of that plan also brings buy-in and often resources, whether volunteer support or financial. And capitalize on partnerships. Take time to think about the assets and existing resources or human capital in your community. Career technical education programs like Future Farmers of America, construction programs, engineering classes, 
may be able to adjust their curricula to lend their support to your farm to school program, or they may have a lead role to play. AmeriCorps nonprofits, teachers, parents, and after school groups may also be helpful allies. And remember to identify roles and responsibilities clearly too. Project partners, volunteers, and students want their time to count. Work with volunteers to utilize their expertise, minimize duplication, and get the job done. And last recommendation here is really develop a sustainability plan with your team from the start. In a prior job, I used to encourage groups that wanted a school garden to have a team of three before starting their project. Too many times gardens come and go because a teacher leaves or a parent's child graduates. Change is inevitable. Make sure you have a plan for how you will handle it before it happens and make sure it always includes team. This will help make transitions smoother. And for funding, um, we encourage the same approach, the same team approach. Uh, brainstorm with stakeholders and make a plan. Together, you may have more ideas and resources than you thought possible. It's also likely easier to fund the program in pieces, like um, funding a tractor, than as a whole, um, your entire program. Start internal and work your way outward in finding resources. As mentioned prior, there may be programs within your school that can shift or use program resources, such as career and technical education or your food services departments to support a school, garden, or farm. And explore your local and state public and private funding. Districts are partnering with um, banks and even municipalities to fund school farms or associated internship programs as part of job development programs. There are many creative opportunities for funding if you have a plan. And explore other federal funding. Does your program have environmental components that align with the Environmental Protection Agency funding? Is your program in a community served by rural development? There are lots of funding opportunities available to the federal government. If you need ideas for where to look, check out our USDA grants and loans fact sheet. Stephanie? Thank you, Juliana. So don't hesitate to reach out to your Farm to School Regional Lead to help you brainstorm and strategize about some of these topics in addition to your state and local experts and even other nearby farm to school programs. If you have questions about any of the content covered during today's webinar or anything related to the farm to school grant program, please be sure to reach out to your regional lead for support. Their contact information is listed here. Next slide. Additionally, our office has a number of fact sheets, webinars, and resources to help you build and utilize strong school garden and farm programs as part of your farm to school program. Check them out on our website. To receive grant updates and other relevant farm to school news, including ways that grantees and others across the country are incorporating local food into school meals, subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter, The Dirt. 